Review, 2022 Bugatti Chiron Super Sport Hyper Activates the Hypercar Experience. Please support us by pressing the like button and subscribe so that this channel will grow and provide many benefits for you, thank you. They say you never forget your first. In this case, my first is a hypercar and it's a doozy. It boasts an 8.0-liter engine with 16 cylinders and 4 turbochargers, a price tag of more than $4 million, and a top speed of 273 miles per hour. Yep, my first hypercar drive is in the 2022 Bugatti Chiron Super Sport. The Super Sport fits in the middle of the Chiron range, though there is nothing middle of the road about it. With more power than the base Chiron, it's faster, but it doesn't have the bonkers top speed of the Super Sport 300 Plus, which reached 304.8 miles per hour. The Per Sport is the Bugatti for dynamic handling, and this Super Sport functions more as a grand touring car. You know, a 1,578 horsepower GT sounds perfect for a relaxing drive up the coast. Approaching the car, I'm pretty anxious. I don't have the kind of insurance that will cover me if I dollar hashtag percent asterisk up this beautiful car. The long tail means it will take up 10 more inches of linear space in collector's palatial garages than the standard Chiron, but it maintains the same width, height, and wheelbase. There is plenty of carbon fiber here, and I cannot get over the rear end. I love the split rear window, sleek wing, and stacked quad tailpipes. The familiar horse collar Bugatti grille up front is flanked by jeweled LED headlights with large intakes below. Above the front fenders sit attractive air vents that consist of nine holes on each side in sets of three. They harken back to the EB110 Super Sport, but also provide high-speed stability as the car approaches 250 miles per hour. I'm surprised the Super Sport doesn't have millionaire doors, you know, the kind that open upward. It's easy to get into, no climbing over a wide door sill is necessary, and once in my rear fits snugly into a well-bolstered, if lightly cushioned, seat. The cabin is pretty sparse, especially considering the price. It lacks high-tech screens and GIGA features. Instead, for configurable digital dials stacked vertically on the dash display either HVAC controls or driving data like max power used, G-forces, and the like. A small shifter sits below. The flat-bottom steering wheel has audio controls and a few buttons to access information in the gauge cluster. More importantly, this is where the drive modes are located, as well as the start button. I take a deep breath and push that button. Immediately, a rumble fills the cabin like nothing I've ever heard, and heads turn to see what is making that glorious noise. It is I, queen of everything, about to embark on the luckiest two hours of my life. Any delusions of ringing this thing out are put to rest as soon as I pull out into traffic. It's 3 p.m. in Los Angeles and I'm in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on Pacific Coast Highway. Remarkably, this hypercar isn't begging me to go, well, hyperspeed. It's perfectly happy toddling along with the flow of traffic, be it 20 miles per hour or 55 miles per hour.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.